Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Proceed at your own discretion. Take 72. Okay, so, <laughs> hi, my name is John Youth. I'm the stained glass teacher at Skyline High School. The reason I started to make videos from my classes was for students who came to the semester late. It allowed them to get caught up without taking all of my time away from the rest of the class. Um, I found out later that if I showed the videos to the classes or the uh, kids can watch the videos at their own paces, that it saved me a little energy from talking a lot, the same thing over and over again. So kind of worked out that way too. Um, by no means am I an expert at Premiere. I took a class at MCC like not quite 20 years ago and I loved it, but I'm kind of muddying my way through this process. Um, there is a guy here, uh, a new video editor, I think his name's Larry Smith. Um, he's got a lot of great tips for you. Um, Steve Benitez is also another great resource you could use. He's got a lot of great tips. Um, so let's get started. Now I'd like to talk about additional hardware for your videos. There are a few things you want to consider when doing your videos. First is an external microphone for your laptop. It just makes your voice a little more clear. Second, a tripod with an attachment to hold your phone or your video camera. It's going to make, well, your one-on-one -on -one recordings with yourself a lot easier. Third, a USB hub to create additional USB ports for your single USB laptop. And then fourth, an external microphone for your um, phone, but these are super expensive, so probably wanna stay away from that. Now I'd like to talk about three pieces of software that are good for uh, videos, which is um, Handbrake, which is good for ripping DVDs into a digital format. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. We have Camtasia, which is great for screen recording. I like it! Um, and we have ZillaSoft, which is great for downloading YouTube videos. USA! 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 The last uh, video extra I wanted to share with you was music. Uh, you can go to free mu freeplaymusic.com or freemusicarchive.org for free music uh, for your videos. Um, there are others, but um, these are two uh, examples. Excellent! <laughs> now that we're done with the extras demo, let's get on to the tutorial. So your edition of Premiere Pro might be a little different than mine. Um, I subscribed to the Creative Cloud a couple of years ago, and it seems to be the same one still on mine. So go ahead and open yours up to see if yours looks similar, um, but we can still work with it. Once you get open Premiere Pro and you get to this dialog box, go ahead and go to New Project. You're going to title this project um, anything you'd like. For me, I'm going to title it Premiere Pro uh, Introduction. Okay. Um, you can tell it where to save it. Right now, it's saving it in my staff data, my documents, my Adobe Promo Premiere Pro 9. Okay. Otherwise, you can save it anywhere you want. I'll save it in there. Hit OK. All right. Now you get to this screen. Now, before we continue, you need to look at your Windows workspace, okay? This gives you the different type of workspaces that we can use in Premiere Pro, okay? Each one is a little bit different. You'll notice the same things are up here at the top, okay? And this is your different workspaces. We're gonna stay with editing. So each of these windows does something. This is your source monitor, and this is your project panel. This over here is your program monitor, and this is your timeline down here. Your program monitor is going to monitor whatever is on your timeline. So you can hit play and watch the little video in here to make sure everything it works out well and your timing is all good. Your source monitor does two things. When you double click on your projects, your project panel will come up in here. You can also double click on your timeline for it to come into the source panel because whatever you double click on that's your source. 
So now that we've learned a little bit about the workspaces, let's go ahead and import media to start. So the first thing I wanna to wanna to do is go to my file that I have organized all my files to import the one folder into Premiere. So I'm importing files now. Uh, we can go in here and look at all the files that we're ready to import into our timeline, or we can take those one at a time from wherever we kept them and drag them in. Either way is good. After importing your files, double clicking on a file in your project panel, we'll go ahead and bring that into your source panel. So here's my source panel. I can go ahead and I can play. Hi, I'm John Muth. I'm the stained glass teacher. And then you can edit and do other things in there, but I'm not going to show you how to edit in there. I'm going to show you how to edit in your timeline. Now to drop media from your source monitor, just go ahead and drag it right into your timeline. This is going to go ahead and create a new sequence and you'll see that on your program monitor here. Now to check your sequence settings, go to your menu up here and go to sequence, sequence settings. And this will be able to tell you what your frame rate is, your frame size, which is 19 by 1080, and that's 1080p, and that's exactly what we want. Your 30 frames per second, that's about TV, which is 29, okay? So these settings are good, we're okay. You can also change the settings in here in case you brought a still life in or a, pi a picture that wasn't to spec. So you can change this to whatever numbers you want, but this is the numbers we're shooting for. I want to give you a little more info about the timeline before we continue. There are three video channels and three audio channels. Now the three video channels don't necessarily mix, um, and, well let me explain here. So let's say I were to drag in a picture and put it on top of this video. What will happen is um, you'll see the image over the video. The reason I started making videos was for students who came into the semester late. Okay, so that can be beneficial, but just understand that layering matters. As for the video, or excuse me, the audio channels, um, they do necessarily mix. If, if I have a voice recording here, I might have a track underneath of music, and I can set those uh, audio levels later. I'll explain in more detail um, about recording your voice and setting audio levels. But for now, these are the basics. Now I want to drop into some photos into my timeline. So I go back into my project panel, find my photos I want to drop, and I can select as many as I want or as few as I want. I'll go ahead and select them all and bring them in and put them in there. Um, now you can see how they're separated here. Um, they come in at five seconds a piece, uh, and this can be changed by either selecting one and right click and finding speed duration, in which case it says five seconds here, and I can go back in and if I want to change it to, let's say three seconds, I can do it there, or I can simply select on it and move it oops, back and forth. Well, if I can't because it's too small, I can use the bar at the bottom to change my zoom so it's easier to manipulate. Now if you've noticed that some of my photos are too big for the program window in Premiere. Now there's two ways to deal with this. First way is to resize it in the program window. The first thing you'll have to do is make sure you select the correct image where this line is here. I'll select this image. I'll double click the image. And then I'll get this little circle. That's why I know I've, I've selected it. Then I'll go ahead and drag it a little bit until I see this node right here. Once I see that, I can make it smaller or bigger. And then drag it where I want to put it. Double click inside the box and then outside the box to deselect it. Now the second way is to go ahead and you're going to want to open this photo in Photoshop. 
So I would go over here, I would double click this image or I would right click this image and open with Photoshop. I've already opened it in Photoshop and here it is. Go to image, size, and it's, it's going to tell you the dimensions in either uh, pixels, inches, centimeters, whatever. Make sure you pick pixels because you know the size of your uh, movie. So I'm going to select 1920 and it will automatically adjust the correct height and width once I type that in. Hit OK and then I hit Control S for save and then I should see that save in Premiere. The next step is recording your voice. Um, if you have an external microphone, use it. You get a much cleaner method of recording your voice than using the internal microphone. Um, you can adjust your layers here by simply dragging the borderline between the two audio layers and it'll expose other options here. Now in this case it's going to expose the microphone here. This, when you click on it, will allow you to record your voice. If you do not see this microphone, go ahead and right click and go to customize. Now it's not letting me customize for some reason, so you'll have to play with that later. Um, also, if you do have an external microphone, right click and go to voice over recording settings. This will allow you to select your external microphone. In my case, I have a blue snowball. Um, and set, obviously, your voice um, settings here. All right, now let's get on to recording our voice. Okay, to begin recording your voice, you're going to want to bring this blue line over here to where you want to start your voice recording here. Okay, second thing is you're going to want to choose um, which audio track you want to do it on. I'm going to do it on audio one, so when I'm ready, I'll go ahead and click this microphone right here. Also, you're going to want to go ahead and mute your external speaker. So hit the FN or the function button at the bottom left of your keyboard and your F1 key at the top left of your keyboard. Otherwise, you're going to get some feedback and that's not good. When you're ready, go ahead and click your microphone button. It'll give you a 3, 2, 1 countdown and then begin recording your voice. To stop recording, go ahead and click the button as well. Now, we've got a little time lag here. Um, my system is going um, to so get started. It needs to do, so. There we go. One and action. And stop. And then check and listen to your recording and see if you like it. Now that we have finished recording our voice, we can begin the process of moving pictures and videos around to match that voice. Now I've finished that up here, so now we can see if we need to edit our voice in our timeline. So we can do that by right clicking and selecting audio gain. It's gonna bring up this little box. Now, <clears throat> if I hit negative five, okay, and hit okay, it'll reduce it in this bar over here by negative five decibels. Now this effect is cumulative, so if I do it again and I right click, we go and hit audio again you'll see it's a negative five and if I do it again another negative five it will be negative ten now obviously I can cancel this by adding ten or going control Z twice and undoing what I just did our target uh, decibel level is negative twelve the next thing we can use to edit our timeline is our razor blade tool. Now what the razor blade tool does is it will cut, just like regular film, it will cut either video or audio um, wherever you want to select it. Now I put the blue line here and all you have to do is put it on there and click once, get our selector tool, select it and delete it. It's that simple. Now, if you want to undo it or you've made a mistake, again, you can always control Z to bring it back and control Z to um, uncut it. But we'll go ahead and make that cut again. Our next step is to create a title page or a series of title pages to separate or introduce different stages or topics of discussion. 
First thing I want to do is go to title, new title, default still. Make sure that your settings are all right. These are perfect. If you want to name it, that's fine too. Okay, then this box will come up. Go ahead and select inside the black box and type in whatever it is you want to name this. I'll go ahead and name this software extras. Okay, now if your font is too small or you want to change your font, you can go to over to the right and go to font family and change that. And then you can change it bold, italic, whatever you want to do. And then your percentage here, let's say I'll double it in size, go to 200%. And I can do that there. Now, if I want to center this on my page, down here it says center. I can center horizontally and vertically. And that'll center my uh, title. I just go ahead, it'll automatically save in my project panel. So just close this out. Go to your project panel, click and drag that onto your timeline. Okay, now if you need to, go ahead and adjust this to whatever size you need it, and voila, we're done. The next thing is transitions. Transitions give pause and redirect viewers to something new in the video. There are two ways to do a transition. First is you select the area that you want to transition, and you hit Control D and you will get the default tran transition, which in this case is a crossfade. Um, then there is the slightly longer way of going to your effects panel and going to your video transitions. And you're gonna have to play with this, dip to black, cross dissolve, dip to white, film dissolve. There's all kinds of different transitions you can choose from. You'll have to play around with that. And then you can drag that over to the panel to the timeline here and you'll get transitions that way now you can also zoom in and delete the transition if needed by selecting it and deleting it now that we have finished editing our video we're ready to export it into one cohesive format now we'll go ahead and go to file export media Okay, when you get to this box here, make sure your format is an H.264. There are a lot of other formats, and unless you know what your target format is, go ahead and select H.264. Next is click on your output name. Right here, it's in blue. This will allow you to choose where to save it and what to save it as. I'll save mine as Premiere Extras. And I'll save it under my Camtasia videos. And then hit export. And we're done.